Everybody, we're live at Pace Studio on the road in Atlanta. We're in the Woodlands at Sweetwater Brewery right now with Elliot Bronson. Elliot Bronson, thank you for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Dude, this is, uh, this is a total treat to have you in here. We're about to hear four of your songs, two of them, uh, three of them from Empty Spaces, the, the 2020 album, and uh, cannot wait to hear what you're about to share with us right now, man. What's coming up first? Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to do a little song called Mountain in My Mind. There's a mountain in my mind when I sit all alone. I can see her, and she talks to me sometimes when I know that I know I really need her. Lately, I'm not living right. I get hung up on the things that don't matter. There's a pathway to the sky like a bridge. Or a prayer or a letter Ooh. Ooh. Do you know just what I mean? Do you think that I'm talking in riddles? Nothing much is Seems I knew that even when I was a little When I found this mountain in my mind When I sit all alone, I can hear her I used to think I was lost sometimes Now I know I will always be near her There's a mountain in my mind There's a mountain Thank you so much. Appreciate All right. It. Thank you, Elliot, man. It sounds, sounds great in this, uh, this cavernous space oh, with the natural reverb happening. You so sound cool. great. The guitar sounds wonderful. Thank you. And that's what I want to hear a little bit more about. I heard you geeking out a little bit with Andrew and a little yeah. bit with Brooks about that particular guitar. Can you tell it's, us more about well, it? Well, it's a cool guitar, but I think the, the sound is coming from the beer barrels. <laughs> I think this is where all, all the magic is. <laughs> now, this is a 1934 uh, Kalamazoo made by Gibson. Found it in Nashville a couple years back and uh, fell in love with it. So uh, I've been playing on it exclusively these days. Yeah. Yeah, is that, uh, you, so that's your one and only for live? Is that what you've been recording on in liter literally everything? It's been lately, yeah. Um, I did have a, well, one of my guitars was stolen this year, so that was a sad story. But uh, I have a couple others that I play, but this is the one I keep coming back to whenever I want to pick something up and write or, you know, uh, do a show. It's just like, man, it's just got the vibe, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, dude, it sounds it sounds excellent, man. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. you sound excellent. Your your voice sounds wonderful in here, and uh, and there's a lot more of your music to be to be shared, man. What's happening second today? Let's do another mountain song. There's a theme to this record. <laughs> this is called "She Loves the Mountains." Smoke from the wildfire. Valley. That sun was cloudy like stained glass through the trees. The wind took her hair, held it in the air, and she heard her voice whisper something on the breeze. She loves the mountains, she loves the mountains, she loves the mountains more than she loves me. That Georgia just ain't no place to be They watched the moon rise They heard her moon cry And she 
She said that man just don't see the things we see She loves the mountains She loves the mountains She loves the mountains More than she loves me Summer finally giving up the leaves, and from that long road she placed a call home, but I didn't answer. She loves the mountains, she loves the mountains, yeah, she loves the mountains more than she loves me. She loves the mountains. She loves the mountains more than she loves more than she loves me more than she loves me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Right. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. So that that song seems like this is the appropriate time in the session to talk about geography and geographical <laughs> sure. changes. I we know that, that you not not too too long ago left Atlanta for Nashville right. and were there during Empty Spaces, and yeah. you're back back in Atlanta right now. Can you talk a little bit about what drew you to each place and what each place uh, sort of the the upsides of being in each place and what it added to you uh, musically and personally and everything? Yeah, yeah. So I left Atlanta in 2018. Came back in 2020, good timing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right before everything hit. Um, actually, I came back as like a to get on a plane to fly to California to play some shows, and uh, my shows started getting canceled. And uh, suddenly, I wasn't leaving Atlanta, and then all my stuff was still in Nashville, and I had to decide what to do. But that's another story. I went there because uh, I guess mainly I'm a writer, and I had this notion about trying writing with uh, other folks and for other folks. And uh, what I discovered is that what I like doing is writing my own songs. <laughs> and of course you can do that in Nashville, but I'd put down some roots here and I'd forgotten about that. I'd spent a good amount of time in Atlanta and being away from it, you know, it made me miss it and uh, made me think that's part of who I am. So uh, it was a good time to be back uh, with my friends, uh, you know, when I couldn't travel anymore. So yeah. Well, welcome. That's the abridged version. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, man. And welcome, welcome back. It feels like a very, very natural place thank to you. host you here in your own neighborhood, in your own backyard. So, uh, man, this is this is really great. I would rather be no other place than here right now. And uh, and there's there's more music, man. What are you going to do next today? Well, I was going to do Empty Spaces, the title track, but now I feel like I should do Atlanta. So, I'm going to do Atlanta. How about that? This has got some more of details of the story in it. I 
took a job at a coffee shop working for tips. I didn't make nothing, but I didn't need nothing back then. And I met a girl with a tongue like a blade. I gave her a ring, but the stone didn't stay in the setting. Are you forgetting me? Oh, Atlanta, summer lasts into the fall. No one's from here. Everyone comes when you call. I knocked on your door and you. Now it's so hard to leave It's all part of me Oh, Atlanta Oh, Atlanta Hey, Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you, man. And how appropriate that. I don't know whether that boom was the Marta train or whether that was thunder, but either way, it was a very Atlanta sound. I think sound. a train like came right on the one at one point. Like it was like I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, can we? Atlanta talk? was like you know, it was like giving me a high five. I yeah, think. yeah, City yeah. Atlanta itself. giving back a little bit. Yeah, it's like we got your back. Yeah, I do love Atlanta. Um, can we talk a little bit about the way that Empty Spaces was made? And it yeah. was made in a, in a bit more uh, stripped back and DIY way than, yeah. than previous records. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Basement, uh, home, home studio recording. Um, yeah, yeah. How, how was it put together? Well, you know, in, in, in uh, contrast, I actually, part of the reason I moved to Nashville is I've been making records in Nashville. I've been living here, but then going up there to make records. I made two records with... Uh, uh, Dave Cobb, famous producer. You yeah. guys probably heard of him. And uh, those were great. And I thought, well, I'll go to town, go to Nashville, and you know, there's probably some other cool cats to meet and might make records with. And I was writing all these songs to a lot of folks uh, every day, sometimes two songs a day, you know, occasionally three songs a day. <laughs> and um, at night, I'd come back home after I'd written these songs with, with people I didn't really know, you know, for other people. And, I, and I, that I honestly didn't care about all that much. And I'd come back home and I'd pour myself a whiskey or whatever and I'd write, and I had just come off this big breakup, if you haven't noticed this in all those songs. And, uh, and I'd write a song just for me. And after six months or a year, I had this batch of songs and I just couldn't imagine doing anything but going back to my buddies, who my band, the guys I played with for years and making a record with them. I thought about doing it other ways. I talked to producers. Uh, but this was just too intimate, too raw, too personal. And I'm so glad we did it the way we did it because I was involved with every little uh, decision and I trusted these guys and I could really get vulnerable uh, and sing these songs from my heart. So. Cool, yeah. man. Well, I'm glad that you had the, the chance to sort of take your foot maybe off the accelerator a little bit and stop with that burnout pace of three songs a day and, <laughs> and do something for yourself. That was also yeah. uh, reading about that, uh, that you've gotten into meditation, right, yeah, yeah. to sort of make, make mental space and make sure that you're taking yeah. time just to, I don't know, digest what has happened during your day. Can you talk a little bit about the importance <laughs> of just clearing, clearing your head and making space for, uh, for non-productive, for just your, your brain to sort of digest what's happened during, during the course of the day? Yeah, I could talk about that a long time, actually. <laughs> That's one of my favorite topics. Uh, but the short answer is that, yeah, I meditate every day. And it's the, but that and music are the two things that really saved me in this period of time, uh, in this big breakup. You know, I, it was basically a divorce, but it was like a 10 years engagement. You know, I found myself by myself for the first time, living alone for the first time, living in a new town for the first time. And, uh, 
to be able to just be with yourself. The thing about meditation is that's just, it's like learning to be your own friend, you know, like learning to just hang out. Like when your friend's going through something and you try to give them too much advice, it's not that good of an idea. It's good to just kind of be there and listen, but we're really bad at that with ourselves. And this is like a practice of that. Like, hey, what's going on with me? Like, what do I really need to feel right now? And it turns out it really helps with the songs too, because that's what the songwriting is about too. Like, what do I need to say? What's the scary thing to say, you know? Like, what's the thing that if I say it, it's gonna be, I'm gonna get like, oh man, <laughs> that's a risk. That's the good stuff. Nice, good, man. Well, I'm glad that you found it and you're getting, so, getting relief from it and using yeah. it the right way and then, uh, you know, turning that into the music that you're sharing with us today. Thank you, thank you. And, and there still is, there's, there's more of it, man. What do, you, uh, what do you feel like doing last today? So I'm gonna end with, uh, this is the last one, right? This is this four. It still count. I'm gonna do the song that I wrote actually in the middle of everything last year, in the middle of the chaos. Uh, this song kind of came to me. Sometimes songs, you know, you, you slave over them and sometimes songs come quickly. And um, often the quick ones are the best ones. You know, not always. Sometimes they come quickly and they go quickly too. <laughs> Just pass right through. But uh, this one came to me really quickly and I felt like it was something, again, I needed to hear. And those are usually the best songs. And uh, I, the, the great Laurie McKenna sang harmony on this uh, track and we put it out uh, last year as a single just kind of, in case anybody else needed to hear it too, because we were all kind of going through the same thing. So uh, this is called, uh, Even This Is Going To Pass.
Thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, Elliot, thank you so much, Thanks, man. Thanks for closing out uh, day one like this. Thanks for bringing that 1930s Kalamazoo. You sounded great. Thanks. And uh, this has been a total, total pleasure on our side. So thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, man, let's go get a beer. All right. All right, <laughs> see ya.